Hi there. Um, what I show you today is to get first uh, module modeled with the little tool uh, built and afterwards um, creating the curves for the Duraform machine. So first I'm gonna go into a right view um, custom machine does work from your right side <coughs> so I'm just building here something if it does make sense or not so first curve um, and then I'm doing a second one just to show you the mod how it does work. I'm actually not a hundred percent sure. Oh, crap. So I don't know 100% if that makes sense what I do right now because I'm just doing like two curves by default. Oh, okay. Just have a look if it does work. So what's important, I have Orto on now so I just can rotate this one for um, 90 degrees. And what I do now is I'm just getting this one on the side, sorry, and command grasshopper in here. So probably you already have two curves, so that's the point where you jump in. So what's important that your curves are closed. And then I'm gonna get to Luminana, here we are. Um, got this data I gave you. So you have this two points. So there's, you already see something red coming up. So there are still curves in there. So put, to right click here, go on clear values and also here to right click and clear values to right click on here set multiple curves click on your curves click enter and it will appear how it will look like in the end <coughs> so what i'm gonna do now as i already said you don't need those two you can delete them um To right click, right click on this one and click on bake and click on OK. And you get your baked object. So now you have it here in Rhino and you could stack a few of them together and have a look if you think it's nice. So what you can do now is to right click on here. You already cleared the values before. So you set one geometry and click on this one and there should be an outcome so what i like to do is to uh, select this object and click on hide object so you won't see it and what you can see now is there are three curves but as you could see before we only use two so you won't need this one so this object would could be made out of two so if you already designed an object, that's the tool you can use to check how your curves will go. 
And to get the curves out, you do right click on here again, click on bake, click on OK, and you have your curves here. Okay. So I'm gonna turn everything on again. Delete this one. <coughs> oh, there's still an old object in there. Well, I don't need that one anymore. And I delete these two curves. So, so what I do now is um, I have those three curves and I only need the two. I don't need that one. So I have this two. So it depends how many curves you need on the object you want to um, produce. So now I open up the file for the CNC Hotwire cheat code generator. Just pull it in here and it will open up the file. So do right click on here and click on clear values. And yes, that's good for now. So what we do, you already see the box in here. We have to bring everything to the right view. You can click on here, you see it said Epsilon, which gives you in perspective the view that it's in this view and to this side. So what's important that they close to zero. I type move, or you can choose it from here. And get this one. And uh, get it up here. Take the top few to rotate that one for 90 degrees. Take the right view again and move it again. And move this one. I can't move that one to zero, I guess, because it's too. It's smaller than zero. I, I suggest this will get a problem in the program for the zero foam cutter. So we have the two curves now. So what we do now is do right click on here. Already cleared all the well, oilies from before and set multiple curves. So. I'm just going to show you simple things through now. So I'm just going to select one right now. So I'm select this one. So what you see, if everything works out well, is that you get like these two towers here and here, the um, hot wire and more or less modules. So what you're able to do now is um, you should be on 2.5D cut of one uh, shape and I will show you what's able to do, what we're also able to do with this um, program, but uh, for now we only use this one. <coughs> so you're able to change the spacing here. So you should have a bit of space in between them. Um, then you can change as many pieces you want. And you should create an offset, which is at the moment uh, minus 0 0.5, which I can show you what's happening. So if the styrofoam cutter goes to, to uh, if the styrofoam cutter goes through the styrofoam, uh, wrong. Um, it will melt a bit. So what we do is we do the line where it cuts actually 0.5 millimeters um, away from the actual module. So it, will, it won't sm be smaller. So if you would um, do it on the correct size, it would be a bit smaller than it should be. So we offset this curve a bit. Um, so then you have to check that simulation is on zero. You can see it simulates here. Um, but check for now that it's on zero. 
and then you can change where it starts to cut. So this is really important because it could happen. For example, if you would start your cut here, it would go from the start like straight through here. So you would um, just cut off a part of your um, piece. So I'm not 100% sure where I want to have it to start. Could actually do this on um, like the first step, which is super hard because it changes. So now it would start on here. This makes it easier to check where to start. Somewhere. Okay, so you got your start point. Um, would you now also see that uh, this is the material box? So it's quite small. Um, so we have to change material position. You should always leave epsilon and Z on zero because you have the the existing styrofoam where you can put your styrofoam in the corner so it will always be on epsilon set zero so you can change this position but it actually doesn't change anything if you just do like straight lines um doesn't matter for the machine so then you should change your material dimensions which are at the moment way too small so if you're bigger and it doesn't go further just do double click on here and you have to change here the maximum value. So for example, I go on a thousand, click on okay here, and now I can navigate it here. I do a double click in here. So I, yeah, 250 is actually good, I think. So now you also see I have it bigger here. <coughs> so I do 250, which doesn't look too bad. Um, uh, leave the, offset of 10, which is an offset to this side and to this side, so epsilon and set. Um, what's important if you do a, ser a series of cuts, that you have the same offset to every side. So means if you rotate your material, like after the first cut, and it, you have a wrong offset, your middle point won't be at the same location and you won't get the good result. So if you do, for example, um, an object, so check that in the best case you do it in a cube of like the same dimension. So it actually makes sense to cut it or like one side is like 20 centimeters and the other two are 10, something like that. <coughs> so we did this one. We did this. Um, so you can change the entry distance. So this means the distance where it goes from one material to the other, uh, from one piece to the other. So it makes sense that this distance is outside of your actual material, but um, it also doesn't make sense to do it like too high. You can change the resolution in here. It's good to have like high resolution, but at one point your computer will crash. So just have a look. Um, you can change here parts that point as well, um, which I leave to zero right now. Um, 
then we have the safety limit which we leave on zero you could run it up so but it doesn't make sense with our machine really oh well yeah it could make sense but so you can change the, the speed but I would like you have two um, parameters you could change like how good your outcome will be Oh, like three like the first the design second is the cut speed and the third is the temperature or like the voltage of your hot wire so I would recommend like with each um, piece you produce always um, write down your cut speed and also the temperature you um, or like the voltage you use in on the machine itself um, so you can't change that one on the machine so you have to change it here so that's only for um, if we do like 3d cuts and not only two and a half and really only for visual purposes because like I mean if the wire breaks it breaks so we don't have to do anything here it's just the whole visualization uh, we don't have to do anything here so now we go to the code exporter so what you see we have here lines of a lot of code um, if it doesn't look like that but it looks like going through uh, errors and like normally your lines are red here as well there's somewhere a mistake and the machine can't handle it which happens a lot if you do um, 3d cuts or if you do like if you would move your curve if you would move your curve downstairs it probably also would happen oh that was the wrong one see so what's happening now they are red so they can't be produced from the machine and it shows you there are 426 targets out of ra uh, out of range targets um so what it does it doesn't generate your code so you're not able to produce anything so you if you have a problem there and you you don't get it fixed like just um let us know we try to help as much as we can do so next thing what is really important uh, you have to choose your folder where it goes so for default you have this one so your computer won't be called Martin Null, which means um, it won't be saved anywhere so you have to check um, get somewhere a folder and get your um, ID of the folder in there so for example um, want to get it into this Luminada um, folder so what I can do to find this one out is I just click on the data and right click and it actually shows me where it goes and what I do now is like I just copy and paste it in here so and what I do now is here's the, fi the file name you can change that also if you want to um, and then click on this button and it showed up a little thing so it should create it your file so here we are we have this file so with this file you take it on your USB stick and go to the stereo styrofoam machine and you're able to do it there now I do the whole thing again with a 3d cut again you we probably won't need that one um, oh, wait there's one thing I want to show you two and a half D cut so um, clearing all values in here so everything will disappear and we set multiple curves and we set those two and click on enter and what's happening now we get like two different pieces this could be interesting if like we do something with like always like two different pieces which have to go into each other so um and with the 
two and a half D turned on, uh, you're able to produce always like both of them at the same time. So here you have to say to do the same thing as before to do material dimensions and everything as I mentioned before, and also change spacing and so ever. There's sometimes a bit more tricky where the start point is because like you perhaps uh, created your curves differently. So sometimes you have to like check if it if you get somewhere a different start point. Anyways, so and um, now if you go on 3D cut, what it does now is it generates a module between those two um, curves. Which does mean um, if you do a module, for example, like um, like a cone, which the, where the, the end is like cut off or um, something like that, you're actually able to produce something like that. For example, I could do like one of those bigger. And you could think about a module which does look like that. Now the spacing is too less. And I only do two. So what you see now is that like nearly my whole module is red because the machine wouldn't be able to produce it. But I'm just showing it as an inspiration. Um, and also, I mean, the, like we are able to do this like in different scales. So if like, if it's not like this, but like just a bit softer and stuff like that. So it's it's harder to actually produce something to that. And then it's also harder to actually get a good result because like um, the machine, it's quite a long way for it to like to change. And then it will just burn like holes in here. But I'm just showing it that it is possible. And if you want to get more into it, you are happy to do that. Um, but I guess now for the seminar, it wouldn't make that much sense. So it's all the same as before. The only big difference is that you can change here. Okay, I actually can't. Okay, anyways, there's not no real difference. So the big thing you have here now is that you won't get any target. Uh, like your targets are out of range and you can't actually get it produced. Anyways, if you get it done that it works. So I'm happy if you do something bad for the moment, we run with two and a half D and I hope this helped you a bit to actually get something produced. Um, and I'm happy for feedback if you need any help or so ever. Thanks and bye.